We're taking time out now to talk about a small cap company that is exploring for copper in Ecuador. This is Solgol. The reports today come at a time when we see copper itself hit a 27-month high. John Mayer joins us now from SP Angel with some more on this. John, welcome. Um, Solgold seems to be one of these companies, the small cap companies, that's uh, trying to make it big in the business of copper. It has some exciting news or has some exciting news recently uh, around uh, its exploration uh, projects. What are the prospects uh, for this company? Well, it seems to have rather, rather interesting prospects right now in that, on the one hand, they've defined a large copper porphyry discovery in, in Ecuador, and they are busy working through the feasibility study work on that. Um, that's slightly delayed because of the coronavirus situation, and it's, it's hit the Ecuadorians quite hard, sadly. Um, but while they're doing that, they are exploring on 13 new targets in the, in the country. Um, there's, there's a lot going on. They were very quick because they were early movers into Ecuador, and they, there was a bit of a land grab going on. Um, and it, we also saw other majors like BHP also grabbing licenses in in the country, uh, but I think BH I think Solgold got there first, uh, and now we're starting to see the results of of some of that exploration coming through. So we've seen a number of announcements over the last week talking about a a new discovery at a project called Porvenir or a prospect called Porvenir, and very long intersections again of of vein hosted. Uh, mineralization within or vein hosted chalcopyrite mineralization. So this looks really very, this is very interesting. It looks like they potentially got another copper porphyry discovery on their hands. We still need to see metallurgical results from this to, to be sure of that it's perhaps another Alpala type discovery. Um, but it, it's making Solgold look pretty exciting. Just want to bring up a share price chart just to remind ourselves as to where this is because we've seen some really big gains recently for the price of, of uh, Sol Gold uh, in the market. It's uh, quite a roller coaster ride, but in fact, recently we've seen this uh, stock rise almost around about uh, 43, 44 pence a share, 750 million market cap. Um, what are the prospects here? And what is the, uh, the benefit to shareholders of what they're doing? Because clearly, when you're exploring, you are using money to establish a resource, when are we going to get some return on this? What is it that's going to happen that's going to give shareholders the big bonanza? Well, what we're hoping for is, is good assay results uh, showing lots of copper in one of the new discoveries. And they have quite a number of new targets that they're drilling. And the latest one at Porvenir is looking really quite exciting. Um, and that's at least the mineralization in that and the pictures that they've published of that mineralization Give us uh, give us a much um, much more confidence as to what they're drilling into and the type of mineralization that we that we might expect to see. So, if this follows the Alpala discovery, we could be looking at nine hundred, a thousand meters or plus of of chalcosite copper bearing mineralization, and that that could be quite exciting. Now, of course, we need to know how much copper is in that. Is it going to be half a percent or maybe one percent copper? Will it have some gold and silver in it as credits? And what's the what's the real value of that going to be? So, Soul Gold is working towards developing and and proving up the value and developing the Alpala project in Ecuador, and maybe it will start having to do that on a second and potentially third and fourth projects. And Ecuador could turn out to be the next Peru and Chile of Latin America from a copper production perspective, which would which would really put it on the map. And of course, at the moment, we've got this uh, both the price of copper and, of course, recent rises as well for the price of gold. So they're, they're, they're playing into a, a, a buoyant market at the moment. But let's not uh, get too carried away. It's all very well, yes, perhaps maybe getting these assay results in, and it gives us an idea of the quality of, of the metal we're talking about. But then, of course, comes this long, boring, tedious, and expensive process of building the mine, putting the mine in place to dig the stuff out of, on an economic basis. Uh, what is the plan that Solgold's got in place, or is it just a question of proving it up and then selling on? Well, I, I'm not sure exactly what the plan is, but um, BHP and Newcrest, both very big mining companies that, that understand and know how to do block caving, um, are uh, both shareholders of Solgold. They, they both own about 13% of the company each. Um, 
So these are the sort of parties you want at the table, and they are their experts are driving the the exploration programs and the evaluation of the Alpala project, and they've got their foot in the door. So if Solgold perhaps makes a second discovery at Porvenir, that that it could um, uh, that they could easily step in and say, hey, let's let let's help you with this now. What ultimately what's going to happen is is Solgold will be squeezed out one way or another, hopefully through a through a full blown uh, competitive takeover process, uh, and one or or a number of these companies will then step in to to build these mines themselves. So, I think from a Solgold shareholder perspective, they're not necessarily going to be there uh, for the long drawn out construction process, but I think they'll be there for the takeout when one of these majors decides that. That it wants to own this project outright, and, and presumably one of these uh, two big investors at some point will stump up the money to build the mine, which of course is a very expensive process. Yeah, the, these mines come with big capital costs. We're talking about two and a half to five billion dollars, and 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 that's just the the rough estimate of the prim, the the very early stage studies that the company's done so far. We're still waiting for numbers to come off the pre-feasibility study, and and hopefully that will come to us before the end of the year. Um, so it's 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 looking it's looking interesting, uh, and it's definitely definitely something where I think investors can can be looking forward to some form of takeover potential, either from Newcrest or BHP, or maybe even from a third party coming in from the left field. Uh, Ultimately, these projects are are generally developed by a consortium of mining companies, but there's so so much future demand for copper anticipated that it may be that one of these companies decides that, that this is that it wants to go in alone and do this itself. Just one comment, if we can, while well, we got you on the price of copper. As I said at the top, it's uh, just at a 27-month high, uh, and it doesn't actually seem to be stopping. The the uh, impetus on those upside seems to be continuing. What is it that's driving the price at the moment? Well, there's been a lot of strong demand coming out of China as a result of restarting a lot of the manufacturing industry. The stimulus programs in China are focused on on power and rail. Uh, they're doing a lot in terms of, of wind farms and solar farms. Uh, they're also installing an awful lot of electric vehicle charging stations because the, the, the entire Chinese economy seems to be orientating itself towards manufacturing electric vehicles and getting them onto the roads. Now we see the President Xi pledging that China is going to become carbon neutral by 2060. Uh, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Uh, some of us will be around to see whether that happens or not. So it's a bit difficult to to say whether uh, how true that pledge is, because um, they certainly burn an awful lot of coal at the moment. But uh, they're definitely heading in the direction of of greater electrification, electric vehicles, and a lot of investors, particularly the institutional investors, go along with that. What we what one of the reasons that copper is actually moving ahead today is because the Chinese currency has been allowed to appreciate. That's the the renminbi or yuan as it's sometimes known, um, and so re the relaxation of the rules on trading the renminbi uh, have seen that the the currency move move ahead, and I think that will carry on going. Uh, we're, we're looking for a, a weaker U.S. dollar over the next few months, a stronger renminbi, and that's going to cause copper and other metals prices to rise. Okay, John. All right. As ever, a pleasure. Thanks indeed for joining us. John Mayer's partner and uh, one of the founders of SP Angel and a mining analyst uh, where he's uh, been looking there for us at uh, the recent moves in the price of copper and sol gold. For more videos from us here at IGTV, join us on Twitter at IGTV and subscribe to our YouTube channel.